everybody. So I'm super excited to show you something that I, I developed uh, this morning, which is a special Unity branching project. So instead of using the Max patch that I, I gave you guys, a little Max application, uh, you can use this Unity project instead. And this what is what this tutorial is for. So I'm going to load up the project. You'll download it and then kind of open it. I'm going to open it naturally. And so I put it on my desktop. I'll go into the folder. Here's my Unity project. I'll hit open and I'll briefly go through how this works. It works exactly like the uh, application that I uploaded originally. There's some problems right now with Sierra, which is why I built this uh, on the Mac side. Mac OS X Sierra uh, is giving us trouble. So this actually works a little bit better and it, you actually can make a, a little game out of your project. So let me go through it really quickly. Uh, I have a basic audio mixer, and that audio mixer just has three faders on it. It has a sound effects, music, and dialogue, and I'm only using music and sound effects. And the sound effects are only for the generic footsteps that are in there. And so the first person controller, if I look down, that uh, where the footsteps are, it's routed to the sound effects output. All right, so let's talk about the main object, the music object. The music object has a special script on it. It's called music branching. And it also has two audio sources, and it basically goes back and forth between those two, uh, between branches, and I'll, I'll talk about that as we go. So it's a branching project, so there are different components. There's an intro, and the intro itself needs a WAV file, and that's kind of what we have here. And so w when you bring in your files, you want to replace them here. I'll talk about that in a minute. But let me just go through the construction of the project first. So uh, the construction of the project is like this. We have an intro, we have an ending. So those are two WAV files, right? And then we have state one, two, and three. And these states can be, for instance, explore, explore, chase, battle, which this one happens to be it's explore, chase, and battle. Uh, but it could be explore, suspense, and uh, uh, you know, lo some location or something. Any case, uh, so in each one of these, um, there's a couple unique attributes. One is so in the intro, we have an audio clip for the intro, and then a reverb tail time. I'm going to set this to zero right now, so you can actually embed reverb tails in here, and I'll kind of go over that. It's it's a little complicated, so I wouldn't do it at first, but then you can put add them in later maybe. But uh, the ending, the same thing. You have the file here. Now to change them out what you need to do is you need to go to your project tab and drag in your own clips here so for instance I would go to my finder or my desktop and I would find all my wave clips and I would drag them into the assets uh, uh, folder right here and this is a mirror of the the actual finder window the finder window being um, in here so if we go into assets this is the mirror this is what I'm seeing these meta files, you might be interested in, it keeps extra metadata in those. You don't have to worry about those. You're not going to see them in Unity. You don't see the metadata files here. Just ignore them. They're kind of like um, when, when you're dealing with Pro Tools and it builds little clip files and things like that. They're just It's storing data there, so it, Unity runs a little faster, that's all. Um, okay, so uh, let's go back to my music object. My music object, I would say, all right, What's my intro clip? Here's my intro. What is my end clip? I click on this to change it out. Click the end clip. That's my own. And then let's talk about states one, two, and three. Now, a state consists of multiple phrases. So right now, I have four phrases, but let's say I need only three. So I'll change this number to three phrases. And now it gives me three. So I can change these out. And right now, I have A, B, and C. But um, let's pretend I'm going back to four. And um, I, I mean, it basically duplicated this last one, 1C to 1C, but I'm going to change that to 1D. So now I have four phrases in here. And they can be as small as one uh, or as great as, as many as you want. So just change out that number. Um, and repeat that for states 2 and for states 3. You can see in states 2 and 3, I only have three phrases here. Uh, by the way, this was a student composer. His name Sam Ewing. He now works for uh, uh, Bear McCreary at Sparks and Shadows. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, let's explain. Um, so let me play it, and then I'll talk about reverb tails and how you can use them. 
Here's my game, very simple. It's just a plane with three objects. When it starts, it plays the intro, this one, and then it will start playing state one, and it will basically cycle one A, one B, one C, one D. Uh, and here we go. So we're gonna hear the intro. So that's the intro there. It's like a long fade out at the end. And then it has these individual phrases. These ones have some silence in them. Uh, yours don't have to have silence if you, if you don't want. Um, so that's 1A that we just heard. So we heard intro and then 1A. And this is 1B. And then we'll hear 1C coming up. Here's 1C. And then I'm going to go through this box here. And what it's going to do is it's going to request state 2. And so when it gets to the end of this phrase, it starts playing. Day two, which is like a chase theme. And then this next one is a battle theme. So we're not in it yet. We're into the second phrase of state two. So I'll go through it now. Now we're in state three. So this is the first phrase of state three. This is the second phrase of state three. So it's like 3B. And this can continue. I actually can go back if I want to state two, uh, like this. And so right here, it will go back to state two. Right? And then I'm gonna end it. Here's the ending through the cylinder. Okay, it's not perfect, but it, it's kind of nice. And it works nicely for this uh, this interactive music technique. All right, so then we can stop it. Um, so let me talk a little bit about reverb tail times. You can actually embed reverb tail times in your wave files, but Unity can't read those automatically. You have to tell it how long your reverb tail time is. If you go back and you listen to that intro phrase, it's really long with a bunch of silence at the end. If I want to I, what I can do is tell it that it has a reverb tail, even though it doesn't, so that the next piece slides earlier and it overlaps. So the intro will overlap uh, with state one. So let me do that. I'm going to make it really obvious. So I'm going to make this three seconds. And so it thinks that my intro has a three second reverb tail time on it. So when I play it, it'll play a little bit of the intro. And then it's going to start state one right away and pretend this is my reverb tail. Right, so it wasn't over yet, it overlapped nicely. It basically shaved three seconds off the end and uh, tailed it nicely. So you can do that if you want. You have to bounce your files with that reverb tail on them. You can't just say, oh, I wanna add three seconds. You actually have to bounce it with three seconds longer than what the phrase length would be so that you would hear the reverb tail. Uh, and that's really up to you. Um, I'm gonna go to the ending here. So it, it state requested the ending and then it played the ending. Anyways, uh, so that's it. Um, it's kind of cool, I hope. Uh, and you can adjust these parameters as much as you want. For the template, I'm gonna leave it as the reverb tails all is zero assuming that you are not bouncing with reverb tails, that uh, you can just put it in with the phrases. We'll also be exploring reverb tails next week when we start getting into whys, but that's, that's next week. Anyways, uh, good luck, and let me know if you have any questions.